Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. Today we head to the home of the Bobcats, Ohio, and the head coach there, Joel Greenlee. How are you, Joel? Good. How are you? I'm good. A couple reasons I'm talking with you today. One of them is to celebrate what was your 20th season at Ohio. It's been a while since you've had a singlet on, brother, but i got to tell you, you're making coaching look good. Congratulations. Thanks, I appreciate it. It was uh, it's been a fun twenty years. Twenty years goes by in a blink of an eye, and you're not showing any age. What's going on there? What are you doing? Oh, I think I'm showing plenty of age. I, I, my hair used to be a little darker than it is now, and <laughs> I used, <laughs> used to be able to, to work a little bit harder than I do now. <laughs> How has the job changed since you started at Ohio some twenty years ago? Well, twenty years ago, I wasn't skyping. Uh, uh, a media guy, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just a lot of things like that technology. I mean, you think about recruiting and, uh, you know, when I first started coaching, you, there was no internet. There was no, you know, no computer. You, you weren't watching matches on computer. You weren't getting results on computer. Everybody was, you know, hustling to the to the mailbox at the first every month trying to get amateur wrestling news to get results. Right. Well, things have changed for a lot of folks, including your fans. Uh, when you arrived, attendance at matches, if I recall, pretty small. Uh, and, yep. and you relied a lot on the family and, and your janitors uh, just to help populate, put all attendance numbers in there. But now it's a different story. Uh, you guys are getting crowded, uh, crowded meets and lots of fans and students. Can you talk about changing the culture? Well, I think a lot of it just starts with... Uh, being persistent and putting yourself, putting your team, putting your sport in, in, in front of people. Uh, it was kind of a hidden gem when I first got to Ohio. Not that many people knew about it. We, you know, we try to do stuff to, to, to get our name and to get our sport out there daily. When you walk into the wrestling room, is it the same for you today as it was then? Yeah, it really is. I mean, it, it, it there's a lot of things about wrestling that I think are, are hectic and maybe not a lot of fun, but the two hours or three hours a day in the wrestling room hasn't changed, and that's always the best part of the day and is a lot of fun. You've led four uh, wrestlers to nine individual MAC championships over the years, 20 NCAA qualifiers, but more importantly, you've had a lot of wrestlers reach All-American status. And that says something about a coach, because if you can keep them engaged long enough to get on the box, and on, and on any rung at that matter, that's, that's, that to me uh, is a hallmark of a great coach. Would you agree? Yeah, I think, you know, that's, that's everybody's ultimate goal is to be an All-American, to get to the NCAA tournament, try to win a national championship, or, or get to be, a, you know, All-American status and, uh, it, it's not as easy as people think. I think people come in as high school. I was a state champ, or I was a couple times state place winner. I'm going to be an all American, and it's it's not that easy. Uh, it, you have to be persistent. It has to be constant. You know, the the three months over the summer when all your buddies are out, you know, working at internships and, and having fun and going to the beach. Uh, you know, you have to be on a constant grind and maybe even traveling to different places to work out, finding good people to work out with to get to, to, to reach that All-American status. You've, it's, a, it's been quite a ways uh, from Waverly, Iowa, to you know, making your home in Ohio. Um, and you didn't really get into wrestling to coach, did you? That wasn't your ultimate goal. Uh, well, yeah, that's, that's true. I mean, I, I, I kind of figured out that I wanted to coach, uh, when I, when I first started wrestling. I mean, I, I think, you know, when I look back, the first thing I really, really wanted to do was probably, probably be a farmer and farm. And, um, I got some great advice from a guy I worked for it. He said, Hey, you know what? You have to go to college and at least try it. I went to college and tried it. And, um, you know, I, I could say easily within the first couple of months, it's something I fell in love with and, and realized that I wanted to do that the rest of my life. 
How did you make the decision to go to Northern Iowa? You could have gone really any place you wanted to go, your size, your strength, and uh, your technique. You know, you were quite a powerful and in-demand guy. How did you opt to go to Northern Iowa? Uh, you know what? I think I was like about everybody else out there. Um, I went on a visit, and, man, I wanted to go there. And then I went on a visit to Iowa State, and, man, I wanted to go there. And then I... I went on a visit to Iowa, and man, I wanted to go there. So uh, it was uh, it, it was a hectic process for me. I mean, first of all, I don't like letting people down, and I got to know all those coaches, and I didn't want to hurt their feelings or, or to have them not like me is what I thought at the time. And um, really what it came down to is I went to Northern Iowa because I thought they cared about me as a person, not just, not just uh, a wrestler. You finished your collegiate career paying you and I back, by the way, paying them back for providing a great home for you. 58, 0, and 3, and that is still the best in school history. Um, you absolutely dominated, Joel. That's one thing I remember about you was you didn't want to let anybody down. Well, in wrestling, you didn't want to let anybody up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, so that's so I might true. disagree with you even for a little bit there, but you gave them a gift that was – that is still standing to this day with an outstanding record. And uh, I got to believe there's some pride there for you and your family. Uh, you, you know what? I mean, I, uh, yeah, you know what? That's something I'm proud of. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely say that, but it's not something I think about a whole heck of a lot. I mean, you know, I was kind of raised and I lived my life to be the best at, at the best that I can be at everything I do, whether that's being a, a husband, a dad, a coach, a, a friend, whatever it is, and that's the same thing I tried to do in college. I wanted to be the best that I could be at, at whatever it was. So if it was school or if it was, you know, academics, or it was wrestling, and um, you know, like I said, I, it's something I'm, I'm proud of, but it's not something I, I think about and say, hey, you know what, that that was great about my college career. Some of the things I think about that are great about my college career were things we did as a team, things that are, you know, we beat Iowa State in the Uni Dome one time in front of. I'm going to guess, and I'll say 13,000 people, it was a packed meet. You know, that was, that was a ton of fun. I remember that more than I remember, you know, records and things like that. In 1992, you finished second at the trials in your ultimate goal of wrestling for the United States. Uh, it was good enough to earn a spot as a training partner or even an alternate. Uh, was, it, was it a little bittersweet for you? Uh, yes and no. I mean, uh, you know, I competed for a long time and I love to compete and I still love to compete, but it was one of those things like, I think I could have tried to compete a little longer than I did, but I also wanted to, to, to be a good coach and I wanted to impact young people's lives. And I think at, at that point in time, I had to make a decision what I wanted to do because I, I wasn't competing at the level I needed to because I was coaching and I wasn't coaching at the level I needed to because I was competing. So, About that time, you were spending two, three, four months a year at DuPont's Foxcatcher Farms in Pennsylvania from 88 to 95. And um, I got to ask you, what, was that a little strange at times? It was a little strange most of the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it was just different. I mean, it was a great atmosphere to train in um, because there were so many good guys out there and, and good coaches and people to learn from and people brains to pick and things like that. But it was uh, it was different from the standpoint of you know Dupont might storm into the wrestling room and kick everybody out and lock the doors. You didn't know what was going to happen. It was just kind of up in the air. Whatever happened, happened. And everybody was scratching their head from Dave to you and everybody else. Yeah, just everybody just kind of rolled with the punches. And, oh, yeah, that's John. Let's move on. After the time you spent wrestling, and, and, and let's face it, at some point when you graduate college, then it becomes a profession, okay? Even though our wrestlers at the time weren't getting paid a tremendous amount of money, and even the awards for Olympic gold medals weren't that much. Uh, it's still considered a profession. You decided at that point, at some point, to return to the University of Northern Iowa as an assistant back in 1989 um, and, and to, to hang up the shoes, as it were. Uh, was that a difficult decision for you? Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, there's not that many things I did in my life that I didn't didn't necessarily complete or 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 reach the level that I wanted to reach. And as far as making a world team or an Olympic team, you know, that, that's one of the things I never really did. So that was, you know, kind of hanging out there like, yeah, I don't know if I'm ready to give this up just yet. But at the same time, I was I was eager to get on with, uh, you know, becoming a, a coach and trying to be a head coach somewhere. If you have, if I bring up this name, I want you to tell me uh, the first thing that comes to your mind, Cam Kelly. Uh, unbelievable skill. He called. He called you the man. <laughs> <laughs> he, you know well, I what? Hope so. <laughs> right, right. But how about this? He, you know, he said that you don't ever talk about your credentials. I mean, you could. And and Cam and others are always talking about more about your character. And uh, I think that speaks volumes about you. And uh, quite frankly, um, you know, you're one of the guys that I've always turned to if I want any advice. Uh, when you took over that Ohio wrestling program in 97, it was a big job. It was, wasn't easy to go to Athens and envision what the program was to become some 20 years later. You've got a top 25 recruiting class going in. You realize you weren't going to be able to compete against the big powerful schools like Ohio State and Iowa as far as recruiting goes, but you recruit wrestlers on uh, who will be fantastic at, what, three, four, five different skill sets, but you also have a recruiting philosophy. Can you share with us what that recruiting philosophy is? Well, for me, I, basically, it's pretty simple. I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty simple guy when it, when it comes to things like that. Um, I want to recruit good kids, good students, and hard workers. And I, I think if you can if you can do those things, it, it's a simple formula to be good at wrestling. I, I don't, you know, I, I think it's, hey, we have a little kind of mantra that we use at Ohio. It's twice a day, every day. So basically that means you're going to work out twice a day every day. Does that mean you're going to wrestle twice a day? No, but between lifting and wrestling and running, and hey, lift our workout twice a day every day. So we're looking for, you know, kind of uh, blue-collar kids that can work hard and, and want to work hard. And, and obviously they're going to do well academically and they're going to do well socially. And um, hopefully they, they end up on the, uh, the podium at the NCAA tournament. If you could think back on your career as a coach, we learn from our assistants. We learn from those that are above us as assistant ADs and athletic directors. We learn from other coaches. Who have you learned um, a lot from? Who can you actually point at and say, that guy? Who is that guy? Well, I mean, I look back and go, you know, there, there's a lot of guys like Coach Briggs at Northern Iowa as an athlete. I look at, you know, I I knew that I was going to coach then, so I looked at things that he did. Coach Miller, uh, Jim Miller was an assistant coach at Northern Iowa when I was there, and he's, you know, went on to be super successful at Wartburg. I learned things from him. John Craves, an associate athletic director at, at Fresno State, I learned things from him. Our associate athletic director, Amy Dean, you know, uh, has helped wrestling out tremendously here, and I've learned a ton from her. But if you looked at, like, guys that I've really – worked under or that have worked under me. I think Kyle Hansen's probably one of the guys that, uh, uh, you know, constantly thinking about wrestling and constantly kept me thinking about wrestling. And I've learned a lot from him as well. You've constantly been, been uh, guilty of doing one thing and that is always doing what's best for your wrestler. Uh, and it was exhibited, I think with Cody Walters as he graduated, uh, uh, two time all American for you. Uh, he he was made aware of a job opportunity at Gardner Webb by you. He was yeah. uh, really set to return to Ohio as a grad assistant, and yet you thought this might be an even better opportunity at Gardner Webb. Why? Well, I, I'm not going to say I regret because I don't necessarily know if that, that that's not the right word, but. Uh, when I left Northern Iowa, I didn't. I never really left Northern Iowa. I, I was there as a, an athlete. I was there as an assistant coach. I had different experiences as far as, um, you know, training under different guys in, in different places and all that. But that was one. 
I would have liked to spend a year or two somewhere else and and kind of see how it's done by other people. Um, and I think that would have made me a better coach down the road. And that's kind of what I told Cody was, hey, we want you to stay here. I don't want you to get you, get you wrong. I want you to come back to Ohio sometime. Uh, but one of the things that, that I, you know, like I said, I, I wish I could change. I'm not going to say regret because I don't, I don't regret my time there at all. But um, I wish I could change is go out and see different things. And I think for him, it, it, he's made a huge impact there. Um, I, I think he's realizing that, hey, you know what? Not everywhere is like Ohio and things are different. So if he wants to be a head coach down the road, it's really going to prepare him just spending a year or two there. You know, in talking with Walters, he describes you as a bit of a superman. You're a mentor, father, coach, nutritionist. And he also shared that there's one lesson that you harp on all the time, and he did use the word harp, and that is time, that there's only so much time in one's life when you have to, to, to wrestle, and then one day it is over. Um, how many minutes are there in a match? Seven. And how many average minutes do you have uh, uh, in your career as a wrestler? If you consider maybe you wrestled uh, six, seven years in your junior years, in your senior years at high school, you've got four years, five years on the outside. It's very short period of time, isn't it, Joel? It is. Yeah, I mean, you got to make the most of what you have because you don't. Just because you went to the national tournament this year doesn't mean you're going to get your going to get better next year or something you know knock on wood let's hope it doesn't happen but you could get hurt and miss it you got to make the most of every opportunity that you have wouldn't it wouldn't it be sad if we only just looked at wrestling and not about life in general as a person i mean wouldn't it be sad if that was the only thing we cared about there's so much more to the person that you're coaching the people you coach the parents the family aspect isn't it fun to have that opportunity it is, I, you know. I think it, you know. I think you have to look at it as a, it's a responsibility to to make sure that that the kids get the most out of it. You know, I, I obviously I want kids to come here and be great wrestlers, but I also want them to get a meaningful education. I don't want them to be a, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to slap any major in the face, but. I, if you could be in a business major, I want you to be a business major, not the easiest major we have, just because it's easy. Joel, it's always good to talk to you. Can you share with us in closing some of the uh, the bright spots on your, in your recruiting class coming up? Uh, you know what? I think we have uh, three top 100 recruits, depending on which poll you look at, and uh, that's the first time in the history of, of you know Ohio wrestling we've had that. Uh, Kyron and Alec Hagen are two twins out of uh, Eureka, Missouri. Uh, super excited about them. They're they're in the top 100. They are multiple state finalists, state champs, placed in Fargo. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Kyron wrestled at the conflict in Carver earlier this year and won a match there. And um, super excited about those guys. Uh, Moises Guillen's uh, uh, Ohio State champion. He's uh, Ironman champion. We also have his brother here, so we're excited about him. Robbie Bowers is a Fargo place winner, three-time Ohio State place winner. Excited about him. Kevin Sarver is an Ohio State champ from St. Parents Graham. Uh, you know, this guy wants to come in and be a, you know, be a pre-med major, be a doctor when he gets out. So, um, you, know, you could kind of go on and on about all those guys, but uh, excited to have him welcome the Ohio wrestling family and. Hopefully they uh, have a lot of success success while they're here. Joel, it's been great having you in the Nike hot seat. Are you at Texas Roadhouse today? I don't know this for sure, but just looking at some of the decorations. Right next door. Right next door? Lunch with mom. Okay, so if you were at Texas Roadhouse, what would you be ordering at Texas Roadhouse for lunch or dinner? Fort Worth ribeye, without a doubt. Without a doubt. <laughs> the big man going big. going big. Go big or go home. That's right. <laughs> if I accuse you of uh, one or two things, I, I'll, I'll be right out there and tell you what they are. Of uh, being, a, being a great friend and absolutely caring about your athletes. And I appreciate that. All right. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. For all of us at Takedown, our very special guest in the Nike hot seat today from Athens, Ohio, is the man, the myth, the legend, the big man himself, Joel Greenlee. 
at the training table today. I'm Scott Casper.